from Washington, this is VOA News. A coalition strategy to battle the group called its calling itself the Islamic State. The Pentagon confirms the death of Al-Shabaab's leader. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. U.S. President Barack Obama's administration is developing a coalition strategy for fighting the group, calling itself the Islamic State, that involves heavy engagement, heavy engagement in Iraq, although the militant group has taken over parts of both Iraq and Syria. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel say the formation of a new and inclusive government in Iraq is a critical step in efforts to fight the militant group. The Pentagon has confirmed that U.S. airstrikes in Somalia earlier this week killed the leader of the al-Shabaab terrorist group, Ahmed Ghodani. It's taken him four days, but Pentagon spokesman Colonel Steve Warren issued confirmation of Ghodani's death Friday. We think this will degrade their morale and, and, and uh, hopefully it will also cause some internal strife as they try to determine who their next leader will be. The Pentagon says the al-Shabaab leader was killed after U.S. forces rained Hellfire missiles and laser-guided munitions onto an al-Shabaab encampment and vehicle. A ceasefire between Ukraine forces and pro-Russian separatists appeared to be holding in Russian-speaking eastern Ukraine, raising prospects for at least a temporary halt to five months of warfare. However, Western leaders meeting Friday at a NATO summit said they were still planning on a new round of economic sanctions on Russia as a means of maintaining pressure on the Kremlin to end its support for rebels in the former Soviet Republic. U.S. President Barack Obama said he was both hopeful and skeptical that the deal will hold. He also emphasized the West was prepared to impose more economic sanctions on Moscow if the crisis reigned. This is VOA News. A new report by the United Nations nuclear watchdog shows the agency has made little progress in its investigation into suspicions that Iran has worked to build atomic weapons. The International Atomic Energy Agency report Friday revealed the probe has failed to make headway. The lack of movement in the investigation could hamper the negotiations between Iran and six world powers on a comprehensive agreement that would see Iran curb its nuclear activities in exchange for an easing of economic sanctions. The World Health Organization says it will accelerate the deployment of experimental treatments of the Ebola virus. The WHO said Friday survivors' blood can be used immediately to treat those infected with the virus. Studies show that blood transfusions from Ebola survivors might help other patients fight the disease. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said Friday the UN is establishing an Ebola crisis center. The goal? Stop the transmission of the virus in affected West African countries within six to nine months. Remember that Ebola can be avoided and controlled. The virus has been contained elsewhere in the past and we can do it today as well. Uh, we know what to do and what needs to be done. Moon spoke at the United Nations. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, says accommodations and supplies for hundreds of thousands of displaced Iraqis must be arranged before the cold weather hits in less than three months. Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from UNHCR headquarters in Geneva. The UN Refugee Agency says time is of the essence. It notes winter is approaching fast and work to reinforce tents and other housing must be accelerated before the snow, rain and mud add to the misery of hundreds of thousands of people displaced inside Iraq. Iraq currently is sweltering under average temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius. In less than three months, temperatures will dip to below 10 degrees Celsius and the rains will begin. 
The UNHCR says its winterization program is off to a late start because of the multiple crises which keep cropping up in this conflict-ridden country. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Mozambique's president and opposition leader have ratified a peace deal, ending two years of low-level conflict that raised fears the country would return to civil war. President Armando Guerpesa and opposition chief Alfonso da Cama affixed their signatures to the deal Friday at a ceremony in the capital witnessed by diplomats and journalists. More on all these stories at voanews.com. I'm Vincent Bruce in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.